Thanks for tuning in to the second round of localization practicum presentations. If you missed last week's presentation, it's not too late to watch it. You'll find it in the TLM YouTube channel. All right. First up, we're going to start with Global Lock. Uh, global Lock, sorry. With uh, uh, the Global Lives project, Blair, Minaj, Sally will walk us through the website localization project they completed this semester. Uh, global Lives Project is a San Francisco-based NGO dedicated to creating a video library of life experience to foster empathy and cross-cultural understanding. Good morning, everyone. Today, we'll be talking about the website localization project that we have completed this semester for our client, Global Lives Project. First, a quick introduction to our team. Uh, I'm Blair. I work as an account manager, and Natalie Ching, she works as a um, pro project manager. And Sally, her life is totally about debugging. She's the localization engineer. Our client, quick introduction. It's a, it's a video library of life, life experience. And by creating like the 24 continuous hours of like the individuals from all over the world, Global Lives, um, hopes to like foster the cross under cross cultural understanding and empathy and here are the two screenshots of our landing page in all for this project we have we are uh, localizing the uh, website from english to simplify chinese and in all we have translated over thirteen thousand words And here is the here are the screenshots of our Chinese website. This is the first half of landing page. This is the second half. This is the overview part. We are we absolutely localize everything, um, all the pages, and even like the strings in the search box, which you can see. Um, we know that there are so many like solutions for website localization out there. Like depending on the size of your organization, organization depending on the budget. But today we will, we will be talking about the best practice if you have limited budget or close to zero. We have no, non-budget, no budget. And if you want to get many people involved, many collaborators to do the crowdsourcing, and if you use WordPress to build your website, then we'll, today we'll have great things to talk about. Uh, here's the like our milestone. We launched our kickoff meeting uh, in San Francisco in person with our client on February fifth, and today is the project showcase. <laughs> and there are like so many like projects and tasks involved. So there are three we want to. There are three like highlights that we want to share with you. The first is the resources. I'm going to talk about that in detail. So. For this project, you want to think about um, what kind of tools you want and what kind of people that you want to get involved. First, we want it to be free and intuitive because um, our like our volunteers might don't know how to use the tool, and we want to to gain enough tech support from the company who provide the tools. And we want to have a native speaker of in, uh, of Chinese, and they have to be hardworking and they are willing to learn the software. And very luckily, we uh, managed to work with Transifex. And this is the email, uh, working as a cup manager, I like back and forth, like dozens of emails, like harassing our, our sales representative from Transifex, Caleb. And actually, I found this guy just on the, on, on the website by like randomly browsing, and there's a like, pop-up window. Hi, this is Caleb. Can I help you? And I say yes. And we schedule like meetings like every, every two weeks, I think. And he also um, provides us with some tech support. And then we have to hire our volunteers. Actually, this is the fun part. Actually, I wrote to my professors back in my college, which, which is one of the best like uh, university major in translation and interpreting. And we hire uh, nearly uh, 17 um, um, volunteers with us. And we also like provide, we have interview with each of them. We, first, we ask them to send our resumes, and we have interviews with them. Actually, we hire everyone uh, who took the interview, but it's not important. The importance is that we want to make them feel like they are important. They're so important to us, and we really see the value in them. And yeah, that's the interview performance, and we also provide. Also, uh, we will give them like the certificate to give back to them to show that they have completed the translation task for a great 
non-profit organization in 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 the states. Next, my colleague um, Sally, she will be talking about the Fangpad technology. So now I will talk about the technology we are using in this project and our product best practices for NGOs to do lo uh, website localization. So for NGOs, website localization can be really difficult because most NGOs have limited budget that they do not want to spend much money on website localization. And also the managers and also all volunteers in NGOs are not localization professionals. So the tools you're using should be very user friendly and simple to learn. And even if you're using a very simple tool, your tool should have the core localization functions that allows you to localize the website within the limited uh, resources. So how to balance these three things is really hard and it, it costs us a lot of trouble. And <laughs> our solution is using the WPML plus the Transifex to do the job. WPML is a uh, WordPress multilingual plugins that allows you to extract all of the strings within your website its main function has uh, three components. It's the CMS, the string translation, and translation management. So the CMS is, allows you to create a WPML page uh, inside your uh, WordPress site. And the string translation allows you to exp export strings uh, are not in your content, export strings in your menus, navigations, and pl other plugins. And the translation management allows you to create projects, sign projects, or push to push your project, or even translate your project within the WPML. WPML. So Transifex is another cat tools that, and also a TMS that helps you to localize your project. So Transifex is free for NGOs, so that is a really good thing. You just have to um, communicate with them. And the good thing about WPML and Transifex working together that is that they can integrate together within the WPML that you can directly assign Transifex as your translation service <coughs> provider and you can push all of your pages, strings within the WPML directly to Transifex so you do not have to use any manual efforts. And this is really great when you're doing the pseudo translation. So when you're localizing your website, the first thing you should consider is analyzing your site. For most NGOs, the websites are done by volunteers, so they have different programming background, programming skills, so the structure can be really complicated. Complicated. You have to understand what kind of plugins you're using, and you have to understand is these plugins uh, suitable to localize? And also, you have to understand the structure of your website. You have to know where to find all of the navigations you're looking for. And also, you have to understand the scope of the project. That's how many pages, how many posts that you're localizing. The second is pseudo-translation. Pseudo-translation is really important for website localization that you have to make sure you have all, the, all of the content there before you sign it to your translators. So we are using Transifex to do the pseudo translation. The strings and the pages are pushed uh, directly from WPML, and we're using the machine translation function within the Transifex that we add a Google Translation API in it to speed up our pseudo translation process. And with the pseudo translation, you can find strings on your navigation, your uh, tags, uh, your widgets and also your footers. And also we have gravity forms. So the third thing about uh, website localization is troubleshooting. Troubleshoot ideally that all of the technology parts should come smoothly, but in the real world, you always have to spend a lot of time on troubleshooting. And it's it just like, a, it just like a detec detective story that you have to use your imagination and connect all the dots together. At first, our website has nothing in it. When we implement the WPML, there's all of the content are gone and we don't know what happened, but we're asking our professor and our friends to look into it. So uh, we finally know that something wrong with uh, a, 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 something wrong with a filter in the website, but we don't know actually what it is. So thinking about language and filter, so we think about language pickers. So we have uh, reset our language, 
size language settings and tried a lot of language pickers and finally make it happen. So during all of the process, we have restored the size for at least eight times and migrate the whole size for more than 10 times to troubleshoot all, the, all of the issues and spending more than 60 hours on debugging. But luckily, we finally made it happen. And I'm really thankful for our professor and our, my teammates to make it happen. So next, my colleague will talk about the quality. So uh, to ensure the highest quality of the translation, our group uh, adopted the, the six, uh, six I strategy, which means the translation has went through uh, translators, uh, reviewers, and proofreaders. So the uh, as as Blair has mentioned, the actually our account manager had one on one interview with each translators and. Uh, uh, this, the, the aim of this process is not only to understand the uh, volunteer, but also to let them understand the project. Most importantly, to uh, double confirm that they would be committed to this project. This is not this. So, okay, so uh, as, as Sally mentioned, the translation was pushed through WPML into Transifex. So the translators had to uh, translate with uh, codes. Uh, to get them pre uh, get them prepared and familiarized with Transifex and uh, uh, translating with codes, we have assigned them sample projects first and uh, give them uh, very detailed feedbacks and evaluations after they're done. And besides that, we also came up with a very detailed localization style guide to set the tone, style, uh, language standards, and even give them uh, very specific examples of how to dealing with codes. And after reviewing all their sample project work, um, we selected three uh, translators from them who did excellent both in language and in dealing with codes to serve and kindly ask them to serve as our reviewers. So uh, as Blair has mentioned, our, translation, our translators were recruited from the best language universities in China, and uh, they are trained to be great translators. So th those reviewers, we believe they are best of the best. So this has helped a lot in increasing the uh, translation quality. Yes. Sorry, this is... Oh, and after the reviewer, uh, the reviewing process is done, uh, our team members served as the proofreaders to add another uh, QA layer to ensure the highest quality. And uh, uh, one thing worth to mention, uh, also worth to mention is that besides the one-on-one -on -one interview, we think we did a good job in maintaining the great relationship with the uh, uh, translators. As you can see here, we actually created a WeChat group uh, where we could actually solve all the problems and also to um, interact with those translators now and then to uh, make them happy and willing to deliver uh, all the translations on time and with high quality. Yes. Next, I'm going to talk about very quickly about our exit plan. Actually, uh, because of the good relationship that we have established with our volunteers, two of them volunteer. <laughs> to work as the project manager to continually keep our Chinese website running after the graduation of our team. So yeah, I think that's pretty, pretty cool. They know like how to translate, they know how to use Transifex, and all we have to do is like um, make them as the administrator of our uh, web, the staging website and um, teach them how to push the content back. And that's all about the presentation. Thank you very much. Very cool, thanks. Okay, next up, Yue, Lance, John, Nikki, and Monica from Turnkey Localization will present Wikitongue's localized website. Uh, Wikitongue's is a Brooklyn-based nonprofit organization dedicated to preserving language diversity. Hi everyone, we are Turnkey Localization Group. Uh, I'm Yue, this is my team is behind me. Actually, we have Lance, Nikki, John, and Monica. First of all, we would like to thank Wikitongs for giving us this amazing opportunity, and our project consists of website localization. 
So to give you a brief agenda of what we're going to talk today, um, we will present um, our background information about Wikitongs. We will talk about our project scope and objectives. Uh, we'll talk about recruiting processes as well as tool selection and our platform Transifex Live, the platform we use to localize our website. We will also talk about our exit plan and we will show you a video uh, showing the end result of our localization process. So who's Wikitongs? Uh, we are a non-for-profit organization based on Berkeley, and they're dedicated to preserve languages across the world. So their mission is to uh, fight against, against language loss, and they're building the first public archive of languages. And we really think that their mission uh, fits with our mass culture, and we really think this is a great project. So um, as, as I mentioned before, we're going to do a website localization. The, uh, the source language of the website was English, and they wanted to localize it into the UN languages. So we did um, Chinese, Spanish, Russian, French, and Arabic for them. Uh, the word count was 3,500 words in each web, uh, in, for each language. We also created a call for them billing for um, project management, engineering, uh, TEP, and testing. And we thought um, that we would be charging 9765 but we give them a 100% discount coupon, so $0 for them. Um, the core team members, um, our direct contact from Wikitongs was Daniel, and below him we have us, our team. And then we also have five translators and six reviewers for our entire project. Um, an overall timeline, uh, we started uh, doing a website diagnosis. Uh, we found out that the website was built using WordPress, and we also asked our client to give us the admin account, and he gave it to us. So we were able to explore um, how the website was built, and we also noticed that uh, it was built using a page builder. Uh, which my, uh, which our engineer will talk later about it. Um, from the tool selection, we explored various crowdsourcing platforms, and finally we decided to use Transifex Live, uh, which likely we got um, uh, we got a very uh, cheap um, license from them, and we, our client was able to pay for it. Then we all, we, we also started our recruiting process, uh, process recruiting our translators and reviewers. Uh, then we did the file preparation, creating picture lists, uh, for, and also update, uh, uploading the files to Transifex so that the translators and reviewers can get into the platform and translate for us. Then we started the TEP process, process, and after that we published uh, all of the localized websites. Um, communication was key part in our process, as well as for project management, for inter internal communication. Uh, we used uh, Asana, and we also used WeChat, as well as email, since we all speak the same language. WeChat was actually our favorite because it was fast, and we can get the message instantaneously. Uh, with our client, we met several times since they're based on um, Brooklyn. We couldn't meet personally, but we met, uh, meet several times through Google Hangouts. And, and our main way of communication was emails as well, like for any detailed information. And with vendors, we use emails mainly, as well as Transifex. And in Transifex, we could uh, will send notification emails to all our reviewers and translators for creating account and letting them know when to start or the, what are the deadlines and everything. So next, uh, my colleague uh, Nikki will talk about vendor management and staff. Our project won't be possible without the help from our volunteer linguists. We have five translators and six reviewers in total, and they are from Nice and from all over the world. We basically contact with our translators with email. And uh, um, in our email, we also give them our login information and the style guide. So we manage our translator team on our Transifex, Transifex platform. So the translators can translate on it, and the reviewer can review on it. And more importantly, our 
our client can also master all the process of this project. So our project is entirely transparent to our client. And we are very happy that our, some of our linguists put this experience to their LinkedIn profile. This is a screenshot from our Russian translator, Maria Lee. And uh, she's a first year Russian TLM student. And we also gave back our recommendation to them. I, we hope this experience would help them. And our team and, is, and Wikitons, we are especially appreciate their contribution to this project. So we ask Wikitons to give them name credit on their website. This is a screenshot from Wikitown's website, and we have all our reviewers and volunteers on it. And this is a screenshot from their Wikitown's website. It's our localization team. So before our translator study translated, we asked them to read our style guide and uh, operation manual. Um, to make our style guide, firstly, we made a phone call to our client to understand their preferences and their requirements, like they want to keep Wikitowns in English instead of translated into any other language. And uh, um, they also have some requirements for the funds and so on and so forth. And we also, this is a screenshot for our style guide. And we, uh, to encourage more our translators to translate on the Transifex platform, so we made an manual. Uh, we made a manual to let them to know how to log in to the platform in less than three minutes. And from here, I'll give it to Lance. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, I'm going to talk about what kind of tools we chose uh, in detail. So um, uh, initially, we found out that the uh, the website was built with WordPress and. Uh, we realized that we could log in uh, with the uh, uh, credentials and see what kind of plugins there are on the website. We found out that there's the uh, there's the uh, app called um, Page Builder, and we consulted with Max. Max said that with P uh, Page Builder plugged in, you cannot use Q Translate X, which was the was the app, the plugin we used. For last semester, software and game localization, when we localized the uh, another WordPress website, so Q Translate X went out of the window, and uh, WPML also didn't work because of Page Builder. Um, too bad our uh, client like they uh, they have a free subscription to WPML, uh, but uh, we couldn't use that. And in the meantime, we're thinking about other. Uh, Proxy-based uh, platform to translate to localize our pre uh, our website. We uh, consider SmartLink and uh, Get Localization. They are both excellent platforms, but the issue is that the their price level is too prohibitive for a nonprofit organization to use it for long term. So eventually, we um, decided on Transifex. Actually, we have been looking at Transifex for a long time. We didn't realize that there are two different options for Transifex. One is file-based, the other one is live. Um, our client was really uh, active in negotiating terms with Transifex sales team. And uh, Dan Daniel told us the good news that uh, we got Transifex for free. We were really excited, elated. And uh, we later found out that it was only file-based, which means any uh, changes on the website cannot be immediately reflected on the actual published website. So uh, that was a bummer. And uh, and then um, we uh, in this process, we were thinking about uh, doing a landing page for Wikitowns, um, just like the kind of landing page that you see on Miss website. But uh, after several weeks of waiting anxious, anxiously, uh, Daniel told us eventually the really good news is that we got uh, Transifex Live at a very heavy discount. So uh, from then on, we were able to uh, localize our website with Transifex Live. So now John will talk about uh, the actual experience in uh, localizing the website. Thanks, Lance. Good morning, class. Uh, I'm going to share with you our experience using Transifex Live. So to start with, we'll start from the preparation phase. Uh, to get it started, we need to add all those pages that need to go to the local uh, that, that we need to localize into different languages first. 
uh, in transit tax terms is called resources, but in the industry we call like linguists of resources. Probably confusing, so we use content here instead. And how do we do that? It's actually pretty simple. It just consists of four different steps. To start with, you need to add a URL to your Wikiton, no, no, Transifex project. And uh, following that, you need to add a snippet into the head section of each page. Remember, each page that you're going to need to localize into your target language. Uh, this, this, uh, this snippet contains, it's a Java, JavaScript-based solution. It contains an API. And it goes to the head section of your page. Uh, we're very, uh, our client was very excited about this. Before he knew it, he, ha he has already got it installed. So at a certain point, we thought, instead of we working voluntarily for them, he's actually working for us. <laughs> and uh, following that, your TrendyFX project life got activated. And you found this amazing small widget on the right of your page. It's a little bit uh, too small, right? Uh. And when you navigate within your whole site, and those pages added automatically to your project. And following that, uh, you need to approve those strings for translation. Uh, in this case, you need to ignore some of those because some of those doesn't need to be get translated because it only contains a HTML, HTML tag or something, or a, or, a, or a symbol for the currency. So for this case, you need to ignore all this all three strings. And when you finish adding the content to a page, we need to add people. And in TransFX term, it's called collaborators. And uh, it's very easy, uh, very intuitive. You need to go to the team and select uh, and input the email and assign roles for those linguists who are working with you. I want to share a very tiny, interesting detail about our project is that since we got a heavily discounted package, there's a limit on the number of collaborators you can have at the same time. In our case, 10. But we have 11 linguists. How do we make that work? And we also have project managers with us. So how do we make that work? Uh, what we did is when the translators finish their translation, we kick them out <laughs> <laughs> and invite the reviewers. Well, uh, we know it's not the best practice. And uh, translator and reviewers should have a time you know, to negotiate those conflicts and you know, troubles. And I ended up spending two hours with my translators on some of the language issues, face to face. But in this case, in order to save money, yeah, it works. So when we finish the preparation phase, now we come to the TP process. Basically, using TransFX Live, you have two options. The first one is work with the editor. The second one is live on your own site. This is how it looks to work on the editor. It looks like a simplified version of Word Server or get localization. You have your original text and target text. When you finish, you click Save, Save All, and then you go to the next string. And the magic of TransFX is it allows for context when you use Live. You can see here it appear, uh, on the top, you can see the original string and the target translation and how it will appear on your own site. That's the most amazing part of TransFX. And when we finished TEP process, we found several issues, and we were able to resol resolve some of them. First thing is, we found some spam pages added to our to our project. With we didn't know where where it comes from. It contains some very offensive and sometimes pornographic languages. So I won't show that to you. Uh, what we did, we sent an email to. I'll show it to you later. Next. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, jumping too far. Where am I? OK. Uh, we, we sent an email to the <laughs> technician at Transifex. They were very responsive. They gave me a reply very fast. Uh, we need to add a URL filter, but it didn't work. And uh, later we figure out all this URL starts with a one digit or single digit number. What I did is manually add all the one digit and single digit number uh, to the URL filter, and it worked. Uh, the other thing is non breaking space. So when you translate into Spanish, when you have a dynamic layout of your website, when you resize it, uh, the seldom digit may get separated from the 100 digit. So what we did is input a HTML tag, which stands for a non-breaking space, between the seldom digit and 100 digit, and it also worked. And there are some other issues we couldn't fix. The first one is pluralized strings. What is that? Uh, is that in English, we have writer for both male and female, but when you translate it into other languages, 
uh, it's different when you call a case, more inflection languages like Spanish. It, uh, when you call a case with different genera, it's a different word. But trend effect doesn't support polarized strings. We ended up using the masculine or the male version of this word. Uh, following that, there's something with a segmentation. Uh, trend effect segment is strings by paragraph instead of by sentence. So when you make a slight modification to one of their strings, the, uh, the whole string goes through untranslated. So, for example, for, uh, this, this, this string contains all the names and you know, uh, their nationality for the volunteer. But when we add, it, when we add our tra uh, volunteer translators, it goes to untranslated. Uh, some of the TM we could, we could reuse originally, we could already reuse it. But in this case, we can't because it's separated by paragraph. And uh, the other issue that we tracked is HTML tags. Uh, Trendifax still cannot get rid of all the HTML tags for its translation. Sometimes the whole string just names an HTML tag and the uh, name of the country. So for MIS students, you won't have basic knowledge of HTML, you know, you don't delete those tags. But for some translators, it can be painstaking to uh, manage all this. So that's pretty much about my part. And uh, I'll give the floor to Monica, and she will talk about our exit plan. So for our active plan, uh, we're thinking about taking this to another level. Just because we're going to graduate in three days' time doesn't mean that we're going to stop working on this. Uh, so except for help them localize their website, we also want to help them with video subtitles because none of us understand what the people in those videos are talking about in their own languages. Uh, we can only get a general feeling of how the language sounds like. This is one of the reasons why Wikihan is doing this, but we think it would be nice if we have the English subtitles uh, on the videos. Uh, it would help us better understand the language, even just a little. So we need the scripts. Um, we suggest our clients to get the scripts in the first place because there's got to be someone who understands their language. It's either the volunteers themselves who are bilingual or someone who contact them uh, who knows their language. And we'll suggest our client on that. And also, we can use Amara to add subtitles to the videos. And we think um, it would help our client recruit translators uh, if we make some changes to the volunteer page. Uh, what we want is that when, volunteers, uh, when people sign up as volunteer, there's an extra column asking them, would you like to become our translator, reviewer, or QA? So in this case, uh, it would, uh, in this way, it would really help our client build as well as manage uh, its linguist database uh, for future updates or new language publish. And we would also come up with a selection plan, such as a screen test uh, for people who want to work, uh, who, who wants to, uh, for volunteers who want to become our translators, reviewers, and QAs. And for continuous localization, um, actually, TransFX has made it all easy for us. Uh, it is JavaScript cloud-based solution, and it has crowdsourcing features, not an advertisement, but it's really easy for our client to manage uh, the localization workflow and um, uh, just synchronize any updates anytime. And for translators, reviewers, and QAs, uh, TransEffect has user-friendly UI, and it would be really easy to use if our translators has worked with any sorts of CAT tools before. And if they're not, we have created worksheet for them, uh, locking TransFX in three minutes. And we are willing to answer any questions from them. And here's a video showing how the localized websites look like now.
So um, at last, we want to thank our translators and reviewers uh, for their time and contribution. Uh, they are the ones who make this all happen. And we want to thank Transifax, uh, who have supported nonprofit organizations. And we feel much honored to have worked with uh, our client, Wikitons, who cares about language and wants to make a difference. Thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, next up, we've got Elaine, Lena, Catherine, Terrence, and Steve. They're going to present their localization project for Tajijin. Uh, the AI, I said it right that time. The uh, AITA Foundation. Tajijin is the first and only nonprofit foundation dedicated to wildlife protection in mainland China. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Terence. We are with uh, Loklingo. Today, we're going to present our project uh, with Vital Foundation. So first of all, a little bit of a profile on our client. So Ta Jijin, also called the Aita Foundation, is a Beijing-based uh, NGO for animal protection in China. And it aims to promote understanding and animal treatment improvement in China. And I, it's widely involved in a lot of causes for animal protection with a lot of celebrities and media gurus. Um, and the causes include a pet animal, wildlife, and farm animal charity. So uh, through our interaction with our clients, we learned about their localization needs. So basically, our client hasn't been involved in localization before. And uh, their websites, all their websites and material contents are in simplified Chinese only. So they would like, to, they would like us to help them localize their contents into English to start with. And uh, the duration is over four months. So document translation is a big part of our project, I should say. And, and we, uh, because our clients have a, a lot of contents on their website, including press releases and newsletters that they would like us to localize. And also, there are also five pro promotional videos. And about those videos, they initially have um, Simplified Chinese subtitles burned into the videos. So when we we are trying to localize them, we needed to recreate the Chinese subtitles as ASS then into SRT before we can create the bilingual subtitles for all those videos. So uh, as I mentioned before, our client knew very little about localization. So we figured the best way to um, sort of evangelize localization on our team is to create a WordPress website. Um, in the website, we include a little bit about, it's not playing, oh, we include our uh, information about ourselves and the services were provided, and also our team members, of course. Yes, our team members. And uh, we also include uh, some facts and statistics about the, the industry. And if our clients are interested in learning more, they are free to go to our knowledge base to learn about localization and basic website localization workflow as well. So uh, we hold a uh, video conference meeting via, via Skype with our client twice a week to ensure that uh, we are on the same page. We brief them of our current progress with our uh, translators and uh, our issues that we're having so far and what uh, can they expect from us. So we also utilize WeChat as a tool because uh, there, are, there are many instances where our clients need to reach us very quickly. And if we have any urgent issues that we need to uh, forward to them, we would use WeChat. And uh, of course, email. Well, we, we, don't, we didn't use email that much. But if we have a, uh, important doc, uh, documents related to the project, uh, not project documents, but imp imp important messages, we would uh, use email. So next, my client, uh, my sorry, <laughs> my uh, my colleague Catherine is going to talk about vendor management. Thank you, Bossy. Um, I'm going to talk a little about about our vendor management. So we wanted to attract and engage more uh, professional volunteer translators into this meaningful journey with us, and to let them know a little bit about our project and client before they are on board. Um, we designed a hiring poster, as you can see from the screen. 
And um, it's a iPhone user interface as if they are receiving call from us. And at that time, we were still not very sure uh, whether we we're going to work with both uh, Mothers of Bridge of Love and Tajijin. So we also include that, uh, Mothers Bridge of Love in that. And also, we appreciate all the kindness and the efforts that our um, volunteers <coughs> contribute to the project. So for any of them who have contributed to the project, we uh, offer them a certificate of appreciation. Um, um, and uh, we include their names and the amount of words they have contributed in this certificate. And also, we we'll send them a uh, hand-drawn miss postcard as a thank you card. Um, before the ball began to roll, we had a video meeting with our all our translators. And since all our translators are from Chinese China, so we um, so we uh, choose to uh, communicate with them in through a very common Chinese messaging tool called QQ, which we think might might be uh, better than WeChat in group messaging. Um, and through this video meeting, we. Uh, describe our, uh, we talk a little bit about our client and also the project, also the style guide, glossary, and also include a um, basic smart cat tutorial, which might be the, which would be the TMS platform for this project. And we also set up a QQ group, group chatting, uh, chatting group. Uh, so when anyone encounter any problems or issues that is concerned about the project or the translation, they can post it into this chatting group uh, so that not only others who can help them can answer this question in this group, but also others who encounter the same problems, issues can refer to this uh, chatting history and to, uh, to know how to deal with that. So since this is the first time for our clients to localize their website, they have no TM or TB in hand. So when we deal with the glossary, we have three main challenges. The first one is that we know that there might be some ideal tools to extract the uh, terms in English context, but th we didn't find an ideal tool to extract Chinese terms. So, uh, and, and that the, uh, the amount of terms that we're going to deal with is very large, which means we have to manually extract all of the terms. And also, uh, many of the terms are Chinese culture based. Uh, which means we have put a lot of effort and time to translate these terms and also do some transcreation. So we come up with the idea that we um, we create a Google Sheet and send send the document to uh, each document is sent to two translators, and the translators extract the terms that the terms uh, and the two translators contribute to their translation versions in the second and third column. Uh, and also as some notes, including the source resources, uh, the source information, and also uh, their reasons for the choice of words in the note. And after the review, review the uh, translation versions, we are got the final uh, version of the terms. And after all of that, we submit the uh, terms into the smart cat, and the translation is ready to go. So next, my colleague uh, Nina will talk a little about uh, a little bit about document translation. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, I was responsible for the translation, a document translation project management in the in our project. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the TMS selection. Uh, the tool, the TMS we select for this uh, this project is SmartCat. Uh, it is a web free website, uh, cloud based TMS. It is user friendly, as we can see from the screen that it allows us to uh, create our project, uh, upload our resources like glossaries and TMS, uh, translation memory, and also combine our users in one platform and communicate with each other. And it is easier monitoring. We can see from the screen that uh, SmartCat allows us to differentiate all the process steps by colors, so we can have a whole picture of this every steps. And it also has the QA check. Uh, during in this translation interface, uh, our translators can come in the during their translation and also do some QA check during translation and after translation. 
And this is the QA report, report of SmartCat. The basic workflow for this project is because uh, our cli uh, colleagues mentioned that this is the first time our clients to do localization, so they don't have any uh, linguistic assets like style guide, translation memory, and terminology. So the first step for us is to help them to build these assets. And then we go to SmartCat to set up our project. We created our users and uploaded the files and set the TEP deadline and assign the task to our uh, vendors. Uh, besides use SmartCat's automatic email system, we also confirm this uh, task uh, through QQ and make sure that uh, everything like the translation, a document file, and deadline were all correct. Then we monitor our process through SmartCat. Uh, basically, it's the TM, T, uh, TEP process, and besides that, we also support our vendors through QQ by answering their questions like how to use SmartCat or them some basic, uh, some linguist uh, questions. And then we deliver our documents and linguistic assets to our client. The challenges for this uh, document translation uh, are two. Uh, two. And one is, uh, the first is that uh, one of our translators dropped out during our process. Uh, what's worse, uh, he didn't tell us uh, he was not going to work with us until I approached him. So thanks to our sufficient translator pool, we successfully contacted a translator who was willing to work with us and translated the document in two days. So the lesson learned for this is that in future projects, we uh, will try to confirm our translators' working time again and again, and try to uh, recruit more res uh, vendors in our recruitment process. And next is SmartCat's QA issue, and let me elaborate that. Uh, SmartCat has the basic QA check. But sometimes uh, it come up with the, it uh, reported the, the mistakes which should not be the mistakes. First is the punctuation. This is a result from our uh, translators translation strategy. They combine two tra English sentences into one Chinese sentence uh, during their translation. So, uh, but SmartCat report that the source and target end with a different punctuation marks. Uh, this uh, so this should not be a QA issues. And second is the misspelling. Smart had report that uh, some abbreviation, the place, uh, the name of place name and the people's name as a uh, misspelled issues. So this is is not also not should be a QA issues. And second is uh, the third is the capitalization. This is also a result from our translators translation strategy. They uh, they combine the two sentences and uh, put the lower case. Uh, at the beginning of the second segment. So what are we going to do is what we uh, would do is go to the SmartCast QA uh, ses, uh, system and uh, mark all this QA metrics. So this uh, arrow so won't be a critical arrow in our final report. Next, our my cl uh, colleague Ellen will talk about the video localization. I will talk about the video project we did for our clients. Um, in this project, we have five videos from the clients that need to be subtitled. And all of these are promotional videos our client used to um, promote the idea of animal protection and also the foundation itself. So in terms of content, these are all marketing materials, which means that simple translation is not um, going to work here. We need to do more with the help of transcreation. So that is one challenge here. Um, the other challenge is that um, when we, our client couldn't find the source videos, so what we end up having are burning videos that has burning um, captions, Chinese captions. So of course, at first, uh, we talked to our client about the problem and to ask if they were willing to having uh, to have um, double subtitle on display, which means that the Chinese caption and the English subtitle appear simultaneously. Um, our clients um, think that it's a good idea and agree us to do so. But on the other, si on the other side, we also realize that um, in the post-production stage, we need to do more work to 
uh, do some styling and also polishing to our English subtitle because we want them to look fit and good in our display. So after that, um, the first thing we do was transcreation. And uh, each of us took one video and we transcribed using the age sub. And then we created the um, localization kit, including transcription file, TMTB from the um, last project of document translation, and also the video clips. And then we send them up to our five translators who use their CAD tool to do the work. And then the, um, the translation went to the reviewer for the LQA. As I, talk, I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, this project deals with highly branded content. So to help with the review process and also to reduce the back and forth quality uh, talk, we set up um, the quality metric Metrics at the first place with um, focus on um, fluency, consistency, and also the idiomatic translation requirements. So we, we also apply um, severity and also penalty points to the um, translation errors. So with this fr um, quality framework, we were able to uh, figure out very quickly how frequent a particular kind of um, translation error occurs and uh, where are they so we can figure out um, um, how to improve and also fix them later on. And after LQA, we will have FQA and also post-production. And uh, Steve will talk about that in vivid details. Hey, thanks, Lily. By the way, that's suit. That's how the uh, engineer should look, look like. <laughs> OK. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Functional QA. Our team used EdgeSub to do the subtitling, and we made a short video about how to do it. OK, in the first place, we tried to use .srt files as our subtitling format. But we found that SRT can't meet our demands because uh, it only supplies some simple functions. So we tried to use .asss file instead. In this video, which uh, in this tut tutorial, we try to localize. Mm, we found that original Chinese text, original Chinese video is too text heavy, and there's no room for the English subtitle. So we decided to use the English subtitle to cover the original Chinese one, as you can see in the pic, uh, as you can see in the video. Mm, to do that, we need to reposition the subtitle and adjust the format. Uh, in this spe uh, specific case, we try to. Uh, make text uh, left aligned and rep uh, reposition it and cut the text into several lines and eventually make the background black. <laughs> All this feature can only be realized by using .ass file instead. <laughs> mm, next, I will talk about the tech rel related aspects in website localization we we've done. Um, fortunately, our clients didn't use any CMS tools. They just built up their website by the stati statistic page. So I have to do the things on my own. First, I create a language menu, as you can see in the picture. In the kickoff meeting, our clients hope that um, the user can change their language when they visit the website. So I, I add a language menu on it on the navigation bar. Second, I found that mm, I made some adjustment in the CSS file to make the website display cor correctly. Mm, what's more, the responsive, responsive design looks just fine. But I think that's not enough. To deliver a better user experience, I want, to, I want the website to, to, load lang uh, to load the language automatically. That means the Chinese user will see the Chinese page and Chinese page of the website, and the, you, uh, those outside of the China will see the English one. And the first solution came to my mind is that the website should identify the IP address of the user and then load the corresponding locale. Uh, after trial and error, I found that identifying IP address is too difficult to implement. So I found an easier way around. That is to identify the browser language. 
If the browser is in Chinese, just load the Chinese page. Uh, otherwise, just load the English page. So I use Java, JavaScript to write a simple script to, into, to realize that function. And I hope the script will run automatically without user doing or clicking anything. So I write it in the, in the head section of in the HTML file. Now, uh, that's all for my part, and my colleague Terence will talk about the exit strategy. So um, during our project, uh, many as as a project comes into the end, uh, some of our translators do did express uh, interest in working with our clients. Furthermore, so we uh, um, handed over our their uh, information to our client, and we also forward our client our linguistic assets, including TMs and TPs. So uh, we uh, also give our client our contact information, of course, so that if it, they have any questions regarding the TMS, for example, they could uh, reach us very quickly. And we also offer to create a YouTube account for them uh, to increase their international presence. So uh, last but not least, we'd like to extend very special thanks to our translators, reviewers, and of course to ourselves. And thank you very much for listening. Good work. Uh, all right, last but not least, Long Lion, Xiu, Danica, Yannick, Grace, and Yang from uh, Long Lion will discuss their work this summer for Mojito and Via programs. Mojito is a continuous localization platform designed by Box. Via Programs is a nonprofit organization that provides innovative experiential learning programs in Asia and the United States. Good morning, everyone. We are Long Localization, a team consisted by Shu Yu Engineer, Grace DTP Specialist, Janik Engineer, Young Vendor Manager, and myself, Danica Project Manager. In this semester, we provided localization services for two clients. One is Mojito. It is an open source platform for continuous lo localization. It is developed by Box. And, uh, the other one is VR programs. It is a um, nonprofit program that provides students with learning programs in Asia and in US. Both projects has a word count of over 6,000 words. Uh, for Mojito, they have two products. One is the web app and uh, the other is the website. So developing the developing team of Box have already localized the web app into four languages. So what, what we actually do is to uh, add more languages into the web app. We are provided with Excel files, but when we build new languages into the web app for in-contest review, we found we also need to localize property files. And uh, they haven't localized the web website yet, so we started from scratch. The source files are markdown files and uh, HTML files. Um, the website can be regarded as a hub file for the web app, and uh, it was published with Jekyll. For VR programs, the total word count is also over 6,000, and uh, we are working into four locales. They haven't done any localization yet, and uh, in this semester, we help them with uh, localization of web pages and uh, graphics and the YouTube videos. The source files are RTL files um, based on we uh, the web account and uh, RTL files, namely picture list for the graphics and uh, subtitle files. We created all the source files by ourselves. For the tools we used, we use the WeChat email, um, Google Drive, and Asana for communication, documentation, and the task assignment. SmartCat is our main, main CAD tool. WordPress and Jekyll are our web tools. 
we use the Qtranslate X for the website localization for VR programs and the Adobe Suite and Amara for DTP. Xbench for QA. And last but not least, Markdown to Xlib and Swordfish for file engineering. Next, Yang will tell about vendor management. Um, okay. So for the two projects combined, we are localizing into nine locales. After we did an initial evaluation of the content for translation for Mojito, we found that the content is pretty technical, so we decided to recruit from those who we know we can trust with their um, profession, no um, yeah, experience in the localization field. So our volunteer translators and editors are Miss students and colleagues and friends from Moravia and Star Group. Uh, in order to extend our gratitude towards their hard work and contribution, we communicated with them beforehand that we will be providing them with the certificates from our team, as well as the formal certificates from VR programs and box. Before we start the actual translation process, we did some vendor training. Uh, first, we provided them with some tutorial videos on how to create accounts on SmartCAD, how to accept tasks, as well as how to work with SmartCAD editors. Also, we provided the vendors with some style guides. Some of the style guides are from the clients. They um, have requirements for the tone and formality of the translation. Also, we created uh, our own style guide for Mojito website localization, to especially to give instructions for vendors to know which strings are non-translatable because there are codings and command lines involved in the um, content. Yeah. And also for Mojito web app localization, we provided them with the link to the Mojito iMac event video so that they could have a better understanding of how the tool works. Uh, during the translation, editing, and proofreading process, we communicated with our vendors to discuss about technical issues, translation issues, as well as um, some delays in submission through those uh, tools, including email, text message, comments function on SmartCat, a lot of in-person communication because we meet each other often, also some cheese case that I made. Yeah. Uh, so our challenges are because we have quite a large translation volume for both projects and our tight deadline. Uh, so it is sometimes hard to arrange the translation within um, the few translation resources that we have at hand. And some of the linguists just went on vacations for several weeks, and some even just moved out of the country. So it did give us some challenges uh, within uh, the translation process. Also, when we were using SmartCat, uh, SmartCat has been sending delayed notification to vendors, which caused a delay in our translation progress. Also, some of the notifications were showing wrong deadlines for vendors, which was both confusing for the vendors as well as us as a team. And when we import the files into SmartCat editors, there were segmentation issues, and we, when we export the files from SmartCAD, there were segmentation issues, as well as some format issues. These are challenges that we've solved on our end, but we've um, communicated with the SmartCAD team about these issues, and we did get replies from them. We hope they could fix these issues for a better user experience in the future. Next, Janik will talk about Mojito localization in more detail. Um, so at the beginning of our presentation, Danica has already mentioned that uh, the Mojito project consists of two uh, major components. So one is web app localization and one is website localization. And here uh, at my part, uh, I'd like to recap the basic facts a little bit. So um, the file types we were dealing with uh, are XLIF and properties files for web app and markdown and HTML files. 
um, for the website. Um, so I'm not going to walk through you uh, for every step of our workflow, but instead I'll, I'll be talking about major challenges and the way uh, we manage to resolve them. Um, so uh, the aim for localizing Mojito is that we want to localize Mojito with Mojito. Uh, considering that it's a transition uh, management platform with excellent features such as string externalization, linguistic assets management, uh, and uh, also transition package creation, uh, we want uh, we think it would be great if we just use Mojito to uh, generate text uh, lib files for translation. Uh, however, as I mentioned, uh, there are 16 markdown files we need to deal with for the website. So. Uh, but it's neither supported by Mojito or uh, nor uh, SmartCat, our online uh, cat tool. Uh, so uh, we got in touch with uh, the client, uh, Ma the Mojito product team first. Uh, we got positive reply that they'll consider adding support for markdown files for Mojito, uh, but to incorporate into the their product roadmap will require a uh, rather long time, which um, basically means that we could uh, not uh, expect this feature for our pr uh, project. So uh, we found an, an external tool called uh, Markdown to Xliv. So um, basically, uh, we put the source uh, Markdown files uh, into the source folder run command line, and uh, it, it generates an Xliv as well as a Markdown skeleton. And after uh, the Xliv files are back from translation, we run it from the tools again, and then uh, it reverse engineered into uh, markdown files. And so this file conversion issue was resolved. Um, also, I'd like to talk about one important uh, part uh, which we uh, carried out to ensure term consistency. Uh, so we have the web app, Xliv translated first, and then compile them to term base and then apply, the, uh, apply it to our website, Xliv translation, and in, in this way, uh, we make sure that the uh, terms used for um, the two components remain consistent. Uh, another important initiative we carry out for quality control uh, is to do uh, post-processing for XLIF files. Uh, we, after each batch of files uh, come from translation, we check for file naming, locale, metadata, uh, to make sure that they look consistent what, with uh, what they were uh, for the source files. And then we run Xbench, uh, AppSec Xbench uh, for the files. Uh, the major reason for doing this is that, uh, as Danica and Yang mentioned, uh, our files contains a lot of code blocks. Uh, and it's important to make sure that the tags remain in uh, intact uh, from translation. Uh, but as you can see, that uh, there are actually quite a few false positives uh, in Xbench translation. Uh, well, uh, in practice, uh, we, could also, we could always create a personal checklist uh, to filter out those issues, but here we just uh, mark off those issues and then generate a uh, QA report for translators to uh, check for. Um, so here you can see that it's actually a SQL um, a command, but the translator uh, mistakenly translated it, so that was detected by uh, Xbench, and we asked the translator to correct it back. Um, and uh, the last part, I, I'd like to call, uh, talk about the in-context review. Um, because uh, the nature of our um, web app uh, product is uh, an, an, a Java web app, and uh, we figured it, it would be good for our quality if we do an in-context review. So um, at the first round, uh, we came up with a draft test plan, uh, including all the um, strings appeared in the XLIF and where to find them. Um, since there are some error messages and also obsolete messages which requires client's input for us to correctly identify those strings, we shared this file with the Mojito product team. And later, uh, they came back with us uh, with some input or suggestions on like which strings we should uh, just get rid of. Um, and uh, we were also able to find some source files error in this process, and we compiled it into a file, and the team was very quick in correct those issues. Uh, and so we had uh, the correct files for uh, letter production. Um, and then from the input bo from both our team and the client, we were able to uh, get a finalized test plan. 
And uh, after that, we came up a PDF for uh, reviewers for annotation. Uh, so that's all for um, the Maheto part. Uh, so next, I'll give the floor to Chloe. Thank you, Janik. Now, going to VI, uh, VR programs. First, graphics localization. Um, altogether, we localized the graphics into three locales, and it totaled um, 60 graphics. Um, one challenge I had was um, that our client built the graphics using Adobe Illustrator, but um, we did get the original AI files, but um, it's not well structured, as you can see on the right. <clears throat> um, a well structured um, AI file, AI folder would be packaged like something um, on the left. So, um, well, so this resulted in um, many missing links and fonts. So we contacted our client, and while we were waiting for their reply, we did came up with a um, alternative solution, which was to um, use Photoshop to recreate the text boxes. Because that these graphics are for web publishing um, purposes, these um, graphics that do not need to be in high quality, so Photoshop would do the job. Of course, the um, the best practice for um, lo for localizable graphics is always to create the graphics using InDesign, because many of the um, CAD tools now support InDesign for file formats, and um, also the CAD tool we use, SmartCAD, is going to uh, is going to support InDesign file in the future. Then. Um, now, website localization, we localized the web, web pages into um, altogether four, four locales, and um, it totaled 48 pages. Our client um, used WordPress to build their website, and this um, gave us two choices with regard to the plugins that we use to localize, to make the websites multilingual, web, WPML and QTranslate X. Um, we ended up choosing QTranslate X because both our clients and us have experience with QTranslate X. We did got the um, admin account from our client, but uh, and they trusted us enough to let us modify on the original website. This is both a um, blessing and a challenge because um, although it's straightforward and efficient, I was really terrified when I was copying um, the source, the sources for translation because I was afraid I might break or delete something. So the solution for this um, challenge was that I used screen screenshots to capture the original website, as well as um, I kept a documentation of the changes I made on the on their original website. Also, I did a mock build um, for each language for each web page to make sure that, that the original website um, weren't corrupted. The other challenge I had was um, lo localizing the website templates. Um, the templates cannot be localized using QTrans hit X. So um, what I did was I installed a plugin in, web, uh, in WordPress and, um, and tried to find the PHP file that contained the strings that's, um, that appeared on the web, web page. And then um, I tried to internationalize the PHP, but then the client was concerned that this might tamper with their original template and original design. So we are still communicating with them um, on this practice. Then my colleague Grace will be talking about video localization for a VI program. Thank you, Chloe. So for video localization, Basically, we did subtitling for our clients' videos, and I followed very basic workflows of video localization. First, I did transcription and spotting on Amara. After that, I downloaded all the SRT files and sent that to our project manager, Danica, to have it imported and assigned to our translators in SmartCAD so that we can take advantage of the uh, existing TM and TDs. After translation, uh, editing, and proofreading, I download SRT files and import it back to Amara to launch final QA. And I paid special attention to line breaks and retiming issues. And because we don't have a um, YouTube account of our client, so we offer a guide on how to incorporate the translated subtitles back. Um, there are several challenges that we met in this process. 
um, as you can see here, uh, the first in the first challenge that we met is transcri transcription. Uh, since none of our group members are native English speakers, we really and we really need to make sure that our transcriptions are error free. So basically, we have every group member to watch and rewatch and rewatch the video to make sure that we capture all the talking. And uh, um, here you can see one of the problems that we met is one of the interviewees in the interview mentioned something that has no context in throughout the whole video. And we were only able to figure that out by referring to a rainbow flag appeared in this uh, in the in a image displayed in the video. And that is uh, LGBTQ, an acronym for lesbians, gays, bisexuals, transgender, and queer. And later we reaffirmed that by going through the VI website. And the second challenge we met is concerning this um, lower third name tag on the screen. As you can see, um, this screen is actually hard coded. And we would either uh, ask our clients for editable source files to work on, or we need to recreate a video by using Adobe After Effects. Uh, however, either way, we really need to consult our clients, which we she prefer. And after discussion, our, uh, our client decided she would rather not as let translate the name tag, since um, most of the applicants, which are our target readers, uh, are expected to have a certain level of English abilities, and they would be able to understand such information. So it is important for us to ask whether um, the uh, whether our the client's uh, decisions where we have problems. And uh, uh, although our client said we don't need to translate the name tag, we still need to fix this problem over overlapping issues. So one possible solution is to uh, change the location of the subtitles when uh, when when we were launching the subtitles on YouTube. And the other way is to um, to change the opacity of the background colors of the subtitles. And we adopt the second strategy. And here is um, a clip of the both the original videos and the translated videos. And now that we have wrapped up, and it's time for us to hand off the project to our client in the hope that our client could continue their uh, localization process in the future projects. We pro provide our clients with some resources and tutorials for them to leverage on in the future. And first, we handed over the linguistic assets um, along with uh, TM, TD, source files, target files, uh, in corresponding languages, style guides, as well as all the updated linguistic prep files, tag prep files, things that they can leverage on. And we also provide them some sets that they could uh, look for voluntary or um, uh, cost-effective translation services, like Ms. Globe Center, One Hour Translation, and Prozy.com. We also provide our uh, client with some tutorials uh, in the tools that they could use in the future. Uh, for the SmartCAD project, we provide our client with some tutorials uh, to help them efficiently use the tools, both as project managers and translators. And during the whole process, our client has been really, 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 really supportive to us. But there are a few things that they could do better in the future. So along with the tutorials, we also give our clients some suggestions. So first, it's, um, as Chloe mentioned before, um, we, while we were doing DTP, there were some missing links. And we have to email with our clients to find those missing uh, files. So we provide our clients with a suggestion and a tutorial in which we elaborate on how to package the um, Illustrator files with all the fonts and graphics together. And since we uh, noticed that one of the video clips they sent to us has some hard-coded subtitles, and so we, along with uh, providing Amara um, tutorials, we also suggest our clients that it is best for them to not um, burn the videos. It is better to save the RCRT files separately so that they can upload the files uh, to the already published videos every time they launch a new language. And uh, so that they don't have to re-upload the uh, new version of a of, of clip every time. And it would be convenient for the audience to switch between languages while they are watching. So that is our exit plan. 
Finally, on behalf of the whole team, I want to express our special thanks to our vendors, including Mariana and Val, who's in this room right now, <laughs> and to Max, who helped us solve some technical problems, and to our very supportive clients, Melissa and Hannah, and finally to ourselves. We can't make it without your contribution. Thank you all. All right. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the translation and localization management program, you'll see a Go link on the screen right now. So thanks for tuning in.